Hey there, and welcome to JRPG, a project I've been wanting to work on for literal years here on YouTube and have finally decided to get stuck in and get going with it. So what JRPG is, is it's going to be a display of a character from a much-loved JRPG, but I'm also drawing the character. All traditional media, pencil only, no AI, no digital, no nothing like that, but I wanted to have a physical tangible object to showcase love for these characters that we've all come to love from jrpgs i want to talk about those characters while i draw them and kind of work out what it is about them that everyone loves so much including me so in today's episode we're going to be talking about clive from final fantasy 16. now clive to me i think is one of the best parts of final fantasy 16 so it's an honor to be able to kind of draw the character in my style and i really hope you guys enjoy what you get to see so without further ado let's get stuck in so the version of clive that i'm drawing here is actually an alternate costume version that you get what well, was released in a patch for final fantasy 16 along with the first dlc echoes of the fallen and I wanted to kind of go with that one just because I wanted my drawing to be a bit different, to be honest. And I think that there's something really cool about the way that the armor kind of looks like it's alive almost. But I want to start by talking about Clive's design overall and why I think people gravitate towards the character within Final Fantasy XVI. There's a depth to Clive and the other characters in F16 that I don't think we get to see very often in a lot of other JRPGs. And I think a big part of that comes from the fact that we see Clive at different stages of his life throughout the game. Of course, at the beginning of the game, we see him as a teenager, then you spend a good portion of the game in his 20s. But it's quite rare that you spend so much time in a JRPG with a character who's in their 30s. And as someone in his 30s, it's quite nice to have a character like that to relate to. His design actually reflects this quite a lot as well because he grows as a character pretty significantly throughout the events of Final Fantasy XVI. I'll try really hard not to go into spoilers when it comes to this game because obviously it's still it's a year old so there are a lot of people who have played it and will have finished it but there are a lot more who haven't so I'm going to try not to worry too much about end game stuff so that I can not talk spoilerish but even in the physical design for Clive like he becomes more refined and less wild as he goes into the later portions of the game because he starts as a teenager very sort of clean cut everything's very sort of neat and tidy but going into his 20s and his time as a bearer he basically develops like a wild or trait to his character and it's reflected in the way his hair looks the way his armor looks his sword even reflects you know those kinds of elements and yet when we go into the later portion of the game he's kind of brought it to like a midpoint between the two where you can see the colors in like in his armor and his face uh, he's got a much sort of more grizzled complexion but it still looks refined like he did in the younger days and the brand itself obviously is a part of this story arc he doesn't have it at the beginning he has it in the middle and then he sort of doesn't have it as the game progresses so to see the evolution of a character through the ages is a design element that i find really appealing so that's why the version i'm drawing here not only is it in his alternate costume i've actually drawn him in the later portion of the game when he's in his 30s and is that bit older because it's the the characterization of clive that i relate to most and i think he's kind of come into his own he knows who he is he knows what he wants and he knows what he's trying to achieve i think a lot of people gravitate towards clive because let's face it it He's hot. He, he's hot. He's very handsome. He's very attractive. And that, I think, is gonna be something that a lot of people gravitate towards, regardless of the consumer's gender. And I think that Clive just has that wild trait that I spoke about earlier. He has stance, and he holds himself and carries himself so well. But throughout the course of the game, he also shows vulnerability and sort of the cracks in his armor and has such an emotional range it's actually quite rare for us to see in JRPGs. Of course, the internet has taken Clive's chest in particular and run with it, and I've decided not to put too much emphasis on that part in my drawing because I kind of wanted to capture the character, not this bit. My eyes are up here. Of course, a big part of that emotional range comes from Clive's performance, and of course that performance is done by Ben Starr. I'm very, very fortunate in that I know Ben pretty well by now. We've gone out quite a few times and 
Honestly, Ben was one of the people that encouraged me to pursue my art as part of my content because I've been drawing since I was a child and I've just never really showcased it on my content because A, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to and B, I didn't think anybody would want to see it but he actually really encouraged me to push in this direction and I was really, really like fortunate to see him not that long ago and present him with a print of this drawing so that I could show him, hey, you inspired me to do this. And that's why my first episode is about Clive. And Ben is just such an incredible person. His performance in Final Fantasy 16 is out of this world. I mean, he won awards for a reason. So yeah, I guess that part of this video is a love letter to him to say thank you for pushing me down this road. I think my favorite point in Clive's storyline within Final Fantasy 16, and I would love for you guys to comment below and tell me what your favorite Five moment is in Final Fantasy 16 is actually really near the beginning of the game and so there's no spoilers for this really unless you've not played anything to do with FF16 so little warning I guess if you're worried about that but it's the point where Ifrit killed Phoenix and you've just got Clive screaming in the background again this performance is un unreal just the level of like emotion in his voice the level of terror at, like witnessing what's happening like i believed it i believed every second of it i remember when i previewed final fantasy 16 last year and was in the room with a lot of other content creators and we were playing this part of the game and all of us were just like jaws on the floor could not believe what was happening and that that's a moment that will stick with me for a very long time, if not forever. And it's because of moments like that, that creative impact, whether it's the art direction, the music, the vocal performances of the people behind these characters that I resonate with. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you'll know I'm not a lore diver. I never have been. I take the narrative um, kind of at face value sometimes, and I, I like exploring moments within games so when i think of a video game that i really enjoyed usually there is a a point in time that comes straight into my head when i think of that game so that's what i want to share when it comes to my art and you know maybe people will call me a fake fan or something like that just because i do skip the occasional cutscene if i feel that i i need to move on the game but equally i've been drawing video game characters particularly jrpg characters since i was a child like i said earlier so to be able to bring that forward and show my creative muse in the form of these video game characters, it conjures imagery that I just wouldn't get from anywhere else. So let me pose you a question. What is your favorite moment in Final Fantasy 16, just as a whole? You know, what is the picture in your mind that comes when someone mentions Final Fantasy 16 to you? Is it a moment in combat? Is it a moment during a cutscene? Is it a moment outside of the game entirely? Like for me, the ability to sit and draw a character has nothing to do with the game almost, but it's still an image that comes to my mind. So I'd love for you to say in the comments below what a moment is that sticks out to you. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. I just wanted to talk about Clive and how much that character has impacted me and why, and also present you guys with a finished drawing that I've created myself. And I just wanna say a big thank you to Square Enix, to, to Ben Starr, to Final Fantasy 16, and to Clive for just carving out a part of my life that I'll never forget. If you'd like a print of this particular drawing or any of my other drawings that I do on this channel or on my other social medias as well, then you can have a look at my Etsy store, which is linked in the description box below. And you can own a Clive print that's, as you can see, has been handmade by me and Ben Star owns one and he likes it. So maybe you'd like one too. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been watching up until this point, uh, I'm kind of experimenting with this video style. It's something that I feel genuinely really passionate about. I love drawing. I love art. I love video games as an art form. So to have the opportunity to blend all of my favorite things into a piece of content that I can use to make contact with other people, whether it be through love of the game, love of the character, love of the art, all of those things, that's something I really want to pursue. So don't 
hesitate to like the video if you do like it or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and let me know in the comments below what kinds of characters would you like to see me drawing in the future i'd love to do like little dives on why i and why you maybe love certain characters in jrpgs and hopefully we can make a real series out of jrpg and i've even had ideas on how to expand it beyond jrpg like I'm a big fighting game fan, as you can see by my drawing of Lily from Tekken that I've done here, and I wanted to do a series called The Art of Fighting. There's so many things that I want to do with this, and I'm really excited to go down this journey, so I'd love for you to come down with me. And of course, before I go, if you'd like to support this channel further, then I have a Patreon link down below as well, which I do will be the first to admit that I need to reformulate my Patreon quite a lot. So for those of you who are a supporter on Patreon, thank you ever so much because you guys keep me going and you give me the ability to have the time to make art like this and continue to create content like this as well. So thank you ever so much. And if you want art prints to be sent to you directly, which is something I'm working on doing a mailing list for, then perhaps you'd like to consider joining up on there as well. But for now, that's going to be all from me. Thank you all once again, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.